John here. Um, I got this amazing drum from Siberia. This is the classic Siberian shaman's drum. And uh, it took about three months to get it from uh, Siberia <laughs> through the Russian post. Uh, but it's amazing. Look at the back. It's forged steel. Sounds amazing. The Siberian happens to be part of my DNA, my father's ancestors. You know, as they came out of Africa, they wound their way up to Siberia and then broke off and went west towards uh, Denmark and Germany, and the rest went over the Bering Strait down into the Americas. Um, and my mother's side went up to Finland, and that's where the Same people, um, the shamans, still are. So the drum has a lot of special meaning to me in that respect, uh, because they're very similar in that whole area of Siberia all the way over to Finland, they found drums that um, that are very similar design, and that's where it originates from. The painting on the drums is very interesting, very unique, and I decided that I'm going to paint that drum myself, and I'm going to film while I do that, just to show you. And because uh, uh, I did a lot of research and trying to figure out what to use how to paint it. I didn't want to ruin it, obviously. Um, but I'd like it to contain, uh, as with that Siberian and Same tradition, the, the cosmology of my shamanic background. And so it'll include the caro, it'll include other aspects of my, my training. And then the drum can be used uh, not only for journey, healing, but also for divination. So it's really interesting. I learned how they use it to divine. So I'm going to show you the, the design that I've, that I sketched out. And then we'll get started. Thanks. <clears throat> so here are a couple of the images from, from the Same and uh, Siberian drums uh, that are used by the shamans for things like divination. It's the three worlds, the lower world, middle world, upper world, the whole that the shaman travels through to get to each world. The different characters, the beings that inhabit those worlds that we call upon, our allies, our teams, the power animals, various different divination symbols and images. And um, so I took this idea, I really like this one, so I decided to sketch out my own version of that and uh, with my own cosmology on there of, of the shaman practices that I do and have learned. So I've got the lower world, I've got Waskar, um, beings that are healing in that world, the three caves for soul retrieval, um, the lake, the sort of feminine image of the, of the void, of the, uh, of the origin of creation power animals. Then I've got the serpent, the jaguar, the hummingbird, and the eagle of, uh, <clears throat> of the carol tradition, as well as the carol markings from their, from their uh, weavings. You can see in the background there on my altar one of those. Um, <clears throat> and the apus, the mountains, Kokopele, which is like the keeper of the, the middle world, various, known in various cultures by different names. Um, and the condor, the sun and the moon, rainbow, and the star people, Hatunchaska, the star brothers and sisters. And then in the upper world, it's all about the divination. We've got Pachacuti Inca, the keeper of the upper world, the journey that we take that the, the stone people, the plant people, the animals, the ancestors, and the, the homo luminous, the beings to come inhabit that world. Then the divination symbols from my own divination stones, as well as the rune and the kabor um, divination. So what they do is they place a ring on the drum and beat the drum and the ring will go over the 
uh, the various uh, symbols that tell us what's going on. So it'll be interesting to use the drum for that. So I'm gonna... What I decided to do was to... <clears throat> was to sketch out uh, onto the drum with pencil just so that if I make mistakes I can I can redo it and then I'll paint I'll paint over that with acrylic it turns out that most people recommend using acrylic for these drums um, I wanted to use something that was very light other drums that I have that are painted kinda heavily it mutes the sound a little bit so I decided to go with the lightest possible paint that I could and um, so we'll use acrylic and uh, as opposed to oil and, and it's a little more lasting than watercolor and it is water based so we'll see how that goes all right okay so I am going to be using um, acrylic paint I checked out did a lot of research and found that that's kind of the most recommended thing for painting rawhide which is what these drums are, are made of and um, I wanted something very light because the heavier paints that I've seen on drums, like the one sort of over here next to me, um, it mutes the sound a little bit. So I wanted something just enough to pig get the pigment in there and, and work pretty well on like a, like a watercolor that might, might not last very long. <clears throat> the acrylic seems to last and so I'm going to try that. Um, and in fact, um, this is, a, this is the brand that I found at the local Michaels, and this was a recommend, recommended by a painting friend. Um, this stuff's really cool, this nickel azo. It's a beautiful golden color. And then I got some, some raw umber for the black, basically. And uh, it's liquidy, the liquidy stuff. And then a jar to mix it in. Uh, and some paint brushes. Show you what I got here. Um, yeah, so I've got some basic paint brushes for acrylic, and then a jar to mix there. And I already have a little bit of my uh, of my blood in there um, to mix with the paint. This, that'll make a good connection to the drum you know, which is a live being, as is everything, and uh, it's, you know, an extension of, of our being, so I didn't, I wouldn't recommend sort of cutting yourself or anything like that to get the blood, but I happened to, happen to cut myself, so I gathered some of it, which is what we do for our lineage stones as well, so, all right, uh, so I'm going to get started on the sketching with the pencil. I'll show you a little bit of that and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to the painting. All right. Thanks. Okay, so here we go. I really don't know what I'm doing, but uh, yeah, it usually kind of works out anyway. Um, so I'm going to give this a try. I'm just going to start with the lines coming in from the top. See if I can get a kind of good, good uh, line here. It's a little hard, I think, with these bumps. I was going to try and. I don't think that's going to work out too good. Let me try this again. So I'm going to try. I'm trying to space a little bit. So I'm going to keep my hand, I think, the same and just kind of go around. Oh, Okay, go around. Artists must be cringing right now. Uh, well, part of the fun is not knowing what you're doing. Okay. Let's uh, so get this outside deal going here. Yeah. And, you know, again, the basic idea here is for me to get to where, uh, need a new pencil, get to where, um, hold on, okay, here we go again, so, come down, kind of try and keep this space consistent, oh, 
Okay, so I have pretty much got the pencil sketchings on there of um, of what's going on, and and um, it's hard to see, but it's all there pretty much as per the uh, original drawing that I did, and. That's it. It's just time to sort of get on with the painting. Um, let me see if I can show you the original draw sketch again. Okay, now uh, it's time to I think to put some paint on the drum. Uh, I've got the I've got the design penciled in. And I'm gonna mix some paints. Try, uh, try to, try to come up with uh, a couple of colors that I think will, will do well. So let's do that. And see what, see what happens. Putting the rest of this stuff. What else do I got? Not that red. That's the color of ayahuasca, which is actually kind of cool. That's what that looks like. Yeah. What do you think, Kimmy? You ready to paint? You ready for me to paint? And then we'll go to the beach? How about it? <laughs> Good girl. Where's your sister? Where's Annie? So, first and foremost, I want to open sacred space, offer prayers of gratitude for the maker of the drum and the animal who gave its skin for the drum and tree, for the wood, the stone people, for the forged metal cross in the back. So we have plant people, stone people, animals making sacrifices for this drum, and the human who made it. And the spirit that embodies it, and all of our spirits that help us do work with it. Winds of the South, Sachamama, Hatunamaru. Hold us, Mother. Thank you, Mother, for holding us. Wrapping your coils of light around us, Otorongo. Great Jaguar. Thank you for protecting this medicine space, for protecting all who use this drum and listen to this drum. Get medicine from this drum. And thank you, wisdom keepers from all traditions, for holding us in the ancient wisdom the wisdom to come. We honor you. You come before us and you will come after us. And Hummingbird, thank you for bringing us your sweetness and doing that which seems impossible. And to the winds of the east, great condor, Alpuchin, thank you, great eagle, for helping us to have the broadest perspective and the clearest vision to use this drum to dream into being our greatest destiny. Mother Earth, thank you, Mother, for always holding us, for being our true Mother. Taking all the heavy energies that do not belong and launching them for us, giving us everything we need in return. Thank you, Father, Son, Intitaita, Mamakia, Grandmother Moon, Star Brothers and Sisters, Atunchaska, thank you. Great Spirit, for showering us with all of your grace, your light, your energy that makes life possible for us. For all those you brought to us to help us. And to take life beyond where it's been before. New possibilities. And thank you to the spirits involved in this making of this beautiful drum. Let's all who use it.
sorry for all you artists out there who might be cringing at this moment. But you know, do the best you can. so good. I really didn't want to get all the heavy paint on there, so I don't mind that this is kind of a lighter color, honestly, because I wanted to keep it light, you know. I could have just left the drum blank. So the fact that I'm doing anything here with it as a bonus. <laughs> some red and stuff because to honor the carol when I put in their their symbols you know it's gonna be all right go with it baby go with it you know <laughs> The idea here, less about me becoming an artist or making a living as an artist, <laughs> and much more about me just doing what I do, which is my shamanic work, and just creating something that's going to support that, right? This is going to be something that's going to bring a lot of healing. The idea. Great. Great. Right. Mm. Look hand painted <laughs> by an amateur. <laughs> when I was younger, it was a long time ago. <clears throat> into something, don't you know? it still plays, right? We're good. Yeah, it's gonna be alright. Let's keep talking myself into that. Oops. 
There's been some amazing hawks flying by the uh, last couple days. Beautiful sound. Tuck their wings and they go 100 miles an hour. It's great. Beautiful. You know, it's funny, before I ever do anything like this, <laughs> my wife's always like, don't you think you should take a class and learn how to do it before you do it? And um, I, I follow her advice quite often. <sighs> but not this time. <laughs> so we'll see. Beautiful drum, you. You know what's really amazing about this drum is when I'm, it's hanging up behind me there in my desk. I uh, when I cough or yell or something, it totally resonates. I bought a drum at Luminata Bookstore as well when I was doing. I do my talks there every uh, <coughs> every solstice and equinox and. Um, Emery there let me use a drum. It's from from the Clinket tribe up in northern coast. And uh, as I was doing the journey, the, the my voice and the drum had the same frequency, and it was it was um, harmonizing, causing like that vibrato. So I knew I had to buy that drum because it shares my voice. And this one, I believe, will as well. If not now, maybe as I get older. Beautiful drum, beautiful drum. At least you can imagine the drum might be laughing a little. Honestly, don't think <clears throat> that a shaman, in the form of drum or any other form, stones, plants, animals, well, well-trained human shaman, oops, cannot be offended. That's important. Important part of our training. <laughs> Not be offendable. So I'm going to assume that my my irreverence or whatever you want to call it here, my lack of taking lessons before I did this and chatting to you while I'm doing it um, is not offending the drum or the spirits related to it. Alright. See about that. It would have been a different story if I didn't film this. Um, but... This 
strange reason, decided to film this. Hey, baby, let's do this. Top down? All right. <laughs> I'm gonna have to use a smaller drone for some of these symbols. Uh, I mean, oh, you know what, I got it. Wait, my hand is such that I believe I should work like this direction. Okay, so let's do that. <laughs> I don't want to be smudging this thing. I think, I think for these uh, finer bits, I'm going to need a finer brush. How about that? Should have got an extra jar. Nice to have a yard with just all kinds of stuff laying around. Pour this in there. How about it? Get a little brush cleaner. Go. Oh, got okay. these things have holes. These things have holes. I think this is what you're supposed to do. Can't be sure. Can't be sure about much anything. Oh. <clears throat> I hope my wife doesn't get mad about messing up her her outdoor altar here. <laughs> or her wash line, just kidding, this is a rack. Okay. 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 Now, tiny brushing. Make me go fast. Tiny brushing. Make me wanna hold you. Yes, bird. Bird, eagle. Eagle. Rut roll. It's alright. It's all gonna be okay. Yeah, it's gonna be alright. Let's keep going. <clears throat> so we have grand vision, then we have the soul. These are the divination symbols from my divination stones. The way these drums work is that you get this brass ring, which I got, and you uh, put it on the drum. You beat the drum. The brass ring dances around, and where it lands is uh, you know tells you uh, tells you what's going on. Tells you what's going on. So it'll be a fun, a new, another fun way of doing divination. I love throwing the stones. You see it on some of my, in fact, one of the videos from Peru this year. We do this wonderful, we did this wonderful divination and prayer ceremony for the return of the feminine. And, uh, <coughs> and it involved throwing the divination stones. I like to do those in sessions as well, after a couple of sessions, to get the, uh, to 
kind of sh shows you where any obstacles and opportunities are for your destiny. The heart. Beautiful heart. Okay, decided to zoom in for a little bit. See this? This is the. Yeah, this is the Trinity. My Mesa, I have a. My kid, I have a triangular stone just like this. And it represents. Trinity, the helpful <coughs> spirits of the three worlds, I guess. And now, the not so helpful people, the ones who would get in your way, the ones who would be sort of sorcerer types. Negative, <laughs> arms down, energy down, how about that? Okay. It's tricky, okay. Now, your vision, what you actually see. Do you see your destiny? Do you see it with your own eyes? You're a bright, beautiful destiny. And can you speak it? Can you express it with your tongue, your mouth? The story you tell becomes your reality. Are you speaking the story that you want to become your reality? Or are you speaking something else? Now we've got, ah, uh, yeah, the feminine, the feminine. Yeah, I got a stone of a shape just like this, so it, represented the, it represents the feminine return of the feminine, which is the leading of everything. Now we've got this sort of shadow. <laughs> the aspects of yourself that you can't see, you're unaware of, that until you do, will continue to create in your experience. So you got to embrace it, see it, embrace it, own it, love it. Uh, a long while back, I did a, uh, I lived in a beautiful single wide trailer on a property owned by a friend. It didn't come out so well. Um, Amazing man, amazing man, Dean Hillier, who very, very generous, very kind, very amazing soul. Who uh, really gave me free reign on that whole property and the whole. It was really where my my sh where I when I was going through my, my primary training, it's where, uh, it's where I went through it, on his property. And I did a self-portrait on the shed on the side of the single wide, and uh, it was around that thing, coming close to 2000, Millennium, <laughs> and uh, 
and I found these uh, figures for uh, shamans, like shamanic figures. I think I was traveling in, in New Mexico visiting my, my teacher, Jeannie, and uh, I found these stencils. And I put them on the outside of that single wide. And uh, and it really uh, it really had an impact, right? It was a, it was a real destiny retrieval, a destiny altar. So I became that shaman, and that's what I'm painting right now. This is the the image. stencil, kind of a Kuchina type figure. Of the shaman. So this represents Pachacuti Inca. This represents the, the keeper of the upper world. The dreamer of worlds into beings. The one who assists you in Retrieving your ideal destiny. So, this is who we contact when we go into the upper worlds. And, uh, <clears throat> and he helps us. All right. Now, those upper worlds are the worlds that this world sources itself from. So we have the world of the stone people, with the volcanoes, erupting volcanoes, and the plant people. Presented by the one of these massive jungle trees, big canopy in the jungle, where I love to go, and then the world of the uh, the animals. Did my best here to do one of these elk because I believe that's what skin this is on this drone. This beautiful drum, the Siberian shaman drum. It'll be all right. You know, and I don't mind if this thing fades over time, you know. It's okay. This is, you know, again, I wanted to be light on this drum. As possible as I could. It's a lot of images, figures. We got the people, we got our ancestors here. The world of Homo sapiens. We got the hunters and the gatherers and the, those who came before us. Then we got the magnificent fifth world, the world of our becoming, the world of Homo luminous, where we get our destiny. drum. Do these um, core divination symbols as well. They look kind of cool, so decided to include 
them. The cool thing is you feel, you know, at least I feel very connected when I do this now to shamans going back who knows how far in history who did this kind of thing, you know? I mean, if I had more time on my hands, I might do a lot more uh, of this painting stuff, because it's cool. Quite honestly, it is very cool. You know, hummingbirds die every night. They go into a, it's called a true hibernation. Where their metabolism, everything shuts down so completely. That they are essentially dead. And they wake up in the morning, they come back to life. They have to do this because their metabolism is so high. They require so much energy just to be that they have to shut down at night. Otherwise, they will die. They will not. They will not have this the energy to do what they need to do. They have to be out drinking nectar all the time. So let that be a lesson. <laughs> Make sure you're getting enough nectar in life. Right? Right. The divination process, this little cross here represents the past, future, that which needs to be called in, that which needs, that which is unconscious to us. So that's the upper world. Now I'm going to paint the, div the dividing uh, line uh, between the upper and lower worlds here. We shamans, we journey. We journey in this world. I'm just chatting with you doing this. Into the upper world to uh, do things like the, the destiny retrieval, you know, to see forward in time, basically. And our vision, it's not that we're, I mean, we can see what's <clears throat> what's a what's likely to, what's most probable to happen based on your momentum tunnel based on what what vibe you're always sending and therefore attracting in your experience but the more important part of vision the more important part of seeing is to see what may be currently less probable but you want to be more probable. So it's kind of a weird thing. I was looking at a TEDx talk the other day. And they were talking about they can actually like uh, pick up imagery off of your retina from, your, from the vision center of your mind because they work in both directions. Not only does the vision, visual cortex, I guess, of your mind pick up what's coming onto your retina now and process it, just normal vision. But you can have signals in that visual cortex part of your mind that can be sent out your retina. And I believe that is key to the left eye, left eye tracking that we do when we are helping to bring in somebody's ideal destiny as the shaman, we will go with the help of our eagle and our jaguar and track along a destiny line 
that is what would be more preferred by our client, like the goals they, they, they set. And by looking into their left eye, through from my left eye, that that vision gets transmitted, picked up in their visual cortex, becomes a part of their nervous system as well as their luminous body, and then that's what influences them. I believe that's how it works from a kind of more scientific uh, perspective. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pretty, uh, I'm sort of interested now in doing some experimenting with that. Can we send information out of, out of our retina, which is a nerve, which is part of our brain, by the way. The eyes are just another nerve cell, you know, transducing uh, the, the visual spectrum into signals for our visual cortex. So, well, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be really interesting to play with that, I think. I think I... Coco Pele is like the Christ of the Southwest, I guess. And I think like to the Inca, it's Kukulkan. Uh, I'm sorry, to the Mayan, Kukulkan. Is that right? Yeah. Or no, to the Inca. And then to the, uh, forgive me if I, I really don't know what I'm talking about, but the, um, Then you have Quetz Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl, Plume Serpent, same character. Anyway, cool being. We got the Apus, you know, in the Karo tradition, the Apus. The Apus are really, really key. The Apus are where the wisdom comes in. They you know, these Karo, they moved up to the mountains to isolate themselves. 18,000 feet in some places. And, um, you know, that was in order to uh, to isolate themselves so that they would not be influenced by the with the myths of the West. The funky mythology that was so antagonistic to the feminine. It's really the source of most of the world problems because if the feminine was in charge instead of the fearful warrior masculine, We wouldn't have big wars, we wouldn't have poverty, we wouldn't have... Environmental issues, sustainability issues. Because the feminine wouldn't make uh, such silly decisions so much. That warrior masculine does out of fear. So, it's really what the goal of the Carol's return is get that back to get the care of the feminine back so that we make good decisions we start to do things right peaceful healthy sustainable ways to lead with the heart more than the head star people chaska seven of these sort of represent the Pleiades, right? Because the Caro also believe they they source themselves from the Pleiades. Out of their wisdom. Maybe they actually came from there, they, they think. You know? When I go to Ayantaytambo, my favorite place in Peru, you know, other than maybe the jungle, but the, the place where I believe the shamans and the royalty and all that uh, pre-Inca and Inca times were buried and stuff. Um, 
There are these seats along the cliff that when you sit there and you, you face the Pleiades and uh, you can you can quiet and meditate and get in to where you're picking up information from from them and I always get some beautiful message from them. I believe I've seen images in my head of them. So um, yeah. Really important. And and at that same location there is a, a virtual hill mountain part of the mountain, part of the rock there that is in the perfect shape of a condor. It's really unbelievable. And so it's no no coincidence that the condor here in the east direction of our medicine wheel is the one who helps us <clears throat> dream the world into being. And uh, so, big, big condor medicine in our tradition. Big condor. And when the eagle and the condor fly together, they say that is when the time has come for the return of the feminine. Beautiful. And I believe that that I believe that that represents the. Uh, fact that these round-eyed shamans from the north, as the Carol calls us, this modern society of the eagle, Americans, for example, and others, will take up the medicine again of the condor, take up the medicine of the south, of the Carol traditions and others. South to north technology transfer. And uh, as a result, I messed that up. As a result, uh, <coughs> would uh, would help usher in the return of the feminine in a way that ideally is much more graceful quick than um, kind of just blowing stuff up, you know? So that's the idea there. That's what, that's what drives my day-to-day -day life and work myself. Um, I saved a couple details for that smaller brush. I'll keep working on the bigger brush here. It's doing okay, doing okay. I love this Jaguar. I think I did pretty good on that one. Now the trick is not to screw it up with the brush. Yeah. Jaguar. Jaguar. Otromo. Chokchinchai. Golden Jaguar. Chokchinchai. There's old names for these characters and then there's uh, newer names so Otorongo is the newer name in Quechua for Jaguar Chukachincha is the old name Condor is Hatun Kuntur, the new name, Kuntur. That's where actually Condor comes from. And uh, <laughs> Apuchin is the old name. And Apuchin, sort of literally translated, means mountain bringing or coming, bringing, I believe. So it's like they bring these magnificent birds bring the mountain 
bring the mountain wisdom down to us. Okay, that's all right. You know, I kind of messed it up a little bit. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> oh, kitty, kitty, kitty. Jaguar. I think I need the smaller brush for that. So you're probably going, no, don't! Don't do it! You're gonna mess it up! <laughs> anyway, um, and the sun, the sun, you know, the sun. Inti Taita. Inti Taita. Father, son. Masculine, the masculine, the, the, the warm, nurturing masculine. It shines warmth and light and heat onto the earth, the mother, the feminine. An unconditional support for this magnificent creation here, happening here. The drama. The amazing drama of this of this of this theater of this playground Beautiful drama this is the way I, I made my son when I was a kid you know I mean, I, I used to be an artist when I was a kid. I could really, I really kind of jam, but I let it go. I had to pick up some things that I let go when I was a kid, like art. And when I was in college, horses. I had horses. learned dressage and polo and western and uh, horse was an amazing medicine right so I think it's time to get back to horse so amazing it's my favorite thing to do Okay. <laughs> you know, I think I'm influenced by those artists I used to watch on PBS, you know? I can't remember the names. One guy was so funny. He was so cool. He'd talk about the mighty tree and the mighty ocean. And I love that guy. I used to watch that just to in awe of the skill of a real artist. You know, the way they could just like put stuff down and make like a tree out of like three strokes and it just looked ridiculously real. Amazing. I kind of keep doing what I do. Came here to be a shaman and work on people. And bridge it in back into modern society in such a way that it could be most impactful, I hope. Um, you know, I'd like to see the world get back to the garden. I'd like to see the feminine back into val its value and power and in charge, making all the right decisions. And I'm willing to support that wholeheartedly. Doing okay. Getting there. How about it? Getting there. I might be done before long here. <laughs> be nice to finish today. I gotta do these anyway. Rainbow Quichi. Okay, so that was serpent. Serpent, unfortunately, was one of those things that was lumped in with the feminine and made 
evil in that funky mythology, that funky story of Genesis, right? Remember that? And yet, serpent's like the ultimate kind of healing energy. I mean, it's total grounding, totally connected to the earth. I messed up this rainbow too bad, John. <laughs> I already did a little, because anyway. Um, the serpent sheds her skin in such a way that you don't hold on to anything. You don't have to hold on to your old, to the wounds and the pain and the, you know. It's such powerful medicine. Yes, the feminine is such a powerful force. And both were made evil in the eyes of man so that man could take charge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The brain, the frontal lobe, to be exact, was made to be exalted. And the rest was made not so good. And we've been struggling ever since. We reclaim the feminine. Let the brain, the frontal lobe, serve the greater part of ourselves, our soul, our heart. I believe all the problems will be solved. Okay, this is now drawing the, uh, the entrance to the lower world. The lower world. The lower world is the subconscious. It's not a, not a bad place. It's just that... It's where we hold on to stuff that, you know, we need to deal with. You know, we need to heal and purge and, and retrieve soul parts that go hiding. This is the world of the soul retrieval journey. The gatekeeper of which is Waskar. Waskar. The one who helps us see in that world, the one who shines the light in that world into the subconscious so that we can go there and get stuff done. <clears throat> we can go there and retrieve these soul parts and stuff. So I got Waskar now. I'm going to put Waskar in there. And I've depicted some of the beings. So this is, this is what would have been referred to as purgatory essentially by Dante where you would go for a while to burn away, cook away the wounds, cook away the quote-unquote karma, whatever it is that you're needing to to heal. So I'm depicting sort of the, the roots of the tree here into the earth, into this world, into the lower world. It's shaky. Anyway, um, but the shaman and our clients will journey into this world in order to retrieve the soul parts, in order to change the stories, change the perception of the wounding, get away from the victim consciousness aspect of it, and into a new story where we're no longer a victim. And instead we are neutral. I guess, and <clears throat> and then we can bring them the soul part back. I don't know how much of this I uh, I was getting. <laughs> Sorry about that, but the, the the lower world now. So we have the serpent, we have the rainbow, we have the the tree, the lower world of Waskar. So I've depicted the soul retrieval journey in this lower world. You'll see in a moment. I. I have the four caverns where we have the wounding that we change the story, we have the contract, we change the beliefs, the myths from the story, we have the new vision, the, the, and then the gift, and then power animals that come. So that's how we're going to do that now. First, before I get there, I guess I'll finish up the uh, eagle, or the condor, here. Condor. 
And then Jaguar, I gotta put the spots on the Jaguar, you know, and the eyes. So I'm gonna do the eye. Jaguar. And then spots. Spots, rosettes. So when you're doing this soul retrieval journeys, you go down into this lower world, down past the roots and the stones, down into this underworld with this beautiful lake. And you go into each of these caverns with Waskar and you get stuff done. And this is the one when you got your soul part back along with the passion for life again. You're playing, you're dancing, and you're happy, and you're out there. Woohoo! Got a lot going on now. You got this whole world, beautiful things happening. It was the cavern where we undid the contracts, tore it up, or, and or created new beliefs contracts that serve you more okay so I got the basic outline done now I've got to work on the, the caro patterns for around the side and I'll show you I'm gonna do one and then we'll but I'm gonna mix some I'm gonna mix some more red into the paint because uh, they're they're things a little more red and uh, yeah so we're gonna try that see how it goes As you may have noticed, I'm not exactly going for precision. Honestly, <laughs> as hard as I try, I'm not going to really accomplish it anyway. So I'm going for spirit. Of it. And it's going to be good enough. Whoops. <laughs> I really messed up. Oh no. Ah. I don't know if this is salvageable, people. I didn't see it. Did you see it? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I did mess up. I did put the thing in the wrong square. And uh, thank God this uh, brush cleaner is getting it off because, uh, you know, oh well. It just would have been a mistake. No big deal. But we're good. We're good. Not a problem. Alright. We'll come back. We'll touch that up later. Anyway, back to the thing. The thing that is the thing is not the thing. Let this be a lesson. And the lesson is just do it. In the jungle, People are hesitating maybe to do the ayahuasca. Which, you know, it's not a bad thing. You don't necessarily want to do that. But then it's like, you know, at some point, you kind of know they want to do it, and they kind of just are, mind is getting in the way with some fear. And then we just say, Nike Waska. Just do it. Learn from Yogananda. Do not argue. Do not, and the shamans say this too, do not engage in battle. Choose your engagements very, very carefully because most battles end in draws. Right, Kimmy? 
and so what Yogananda used to do he was somebody was trying to tell him something argue or whatever he just say you may be right you may be right And then there's kind of nothing left to argue about. The person goes off and uh, finds out whether or not they they were right. Hey, it's Annie. Hey, Annie. It's Annie and Kimmy. They probably want to go for a walk. I've been a little neglectful. I'm so sorry. Buggers, I'm just trying to finish my drum. Don't you? Oh, oh. Okay, come here. Come here. Come here, Annie. I'm going to show you to the camera. This is Annie. See? See Annie? That's Annie. She's old. 90 years old. <laughs> She's old, old, old doggy. Mm, mm, mm. 90 years old. See? Say hi to the camera. She's very social. She likes to know who, what. Okay. Okay. Oop. Oh. All right. Kimmy, you saw Kimmy earlier. Kimmy. Kimmy. <laughs> they love each other. Okay. Just want to get this done and then we'll go for a walk. A little bit later, okay? Just let me get this done. I'll be done soon. I'll be done. Yeah. It's getting there. Getting there. I like it. It's all going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. Mighty drum. May you continue to beat mightily on. It's okay. It's alright. A little messy. A little messy in the underworld. That was the idea, and I think it's a beautiful drum, and, uh, you know, I could fiddle around a little more, <coughs> but I'm not the kind to fiddle too much. Okay, so there it is, the completed drum. And at the top we have the source coming in. We have Pachacuti Inca, the keeper of the upper worlds. We have my divination stone figures, symbols, the overall vision, the heart, the soul, that which has been healed, that which needs to be healed, obstacles, helpful people, spirit, trinity, help, unhelpful people, what you actually see, what you actually speak, the feminine, and then shadow. And then we have the hummingbird, we have Pachacuti in the upper worlds that this world sources it from, the stone people, the plant people, the animals, humans, and Homo luminous. So we have the Kabor symbols, we have productivity, enlightenment, completeness, um, goals, change, restriction, neutral, positive or negative. We have uh, threat, we have secrets, we have mischief, we have interaction, we have obstacles, we have abundance, balance, um, misfortune, uh, plenty to offer others, we have our own wealth, we have the feminine, uh, or fertility, prosperity, we have vision, wisdom, and we have strength, ability, and resilience. So then you can see we have the hummingbird, we have, uh, so that's the upper world, we have 
the middle world, this world, Coco Pele, the one who guides us through this world, the, the uh, Christ-like figure, so many different religions that represents. We have the Apus, the wisdom of the mountains that are supporting us, providing water, jaguar, sun, moon, serpent, the stars, and the seven stars, and particularly of the Pleiades, and then we have the condor and the rainbow, uh, representing many things in, in the Carol tradition, the rainbow bridge. Then we have the lower world, where the tree roots come down and we do our journeys for soul retrieval. We have Waskar, the keeper of the lower world. We have the, the cavern of our wounded part, soul part, the contracts, the that we need to change or get rid of. We have the the you that is then whole and the vision of the life whole and then the gift that you receive and you bring to the world and then the power animals that come and help you. This is the lake we drop into when we get there. And uh, Waskar helping to light the way. And then we have other beings that are there healing. And then we have uh, here is just sort of the the representation of the of the void, the source of all things, and full circle to the source that comes down on us. So, or this could also mean the feminine that takes all of our wastes and mulches it. So that's it. Finished. Can't wait to use it. And here's an example of the ring I was talking about earlier, that when we place it on the drum and it's flat and we beat the drum, it'll, it'll move around and it'll, it'll show us what we need. So it's another form that the ancient Same shamans in particular used uh, in order to help their, their people.